All right, everybody, thank you for joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be joining us around the globe today. I know we have a lot of people from all around the world, um, some of our international customers as well as our, our domestic customers here in the, the U.S. and Canada. So thank you, everybody, for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be a part of this webinar uh, talking about what's new in RhinoCamp 2014. So um, this morning's webinar, uh, but actually before I get to talk about that, I want to answer one question. What is RhinoCamp 2014? And uh, for those of you that maybe are new to MechSoft or are unfamiliar with RhinoCam, RhinoCam is our fully integrated CAM software for Rhinoceros 5. Um, we just released RhinoCam 2014 uh, just earlier this week. So we, we now have, um, uh, I guess, a change with RhinoCam 2014 is it now includes new modules for, for turn, art, and nest. Previously, RhinoCam only was milling, and so we now have turn, art, and nest. And although they are all included in a single download of RhinoCam 2014, they're actually sold and licensed separately. So uh, what that means is you're only going to be paying for the modules that you need. So if you only need the milling, you'll only be paying for that, uh, uh, which is convenient. You don't want to be paying for something you, you won't be using. So uh, we're, we're going to get to what all those entail in just a little bit. Uh, but first, I just want to talk about this morning's webinar. It's going to be an overview of the, the new features and enhancements. So you will not learn everything there is to know about um, RhinoCam 2014. It, it's just impossible to do in, in a webinar. There's just too many features. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go over everything that's new this morning uh, and kind of give you a, a general overview of, of the new features and enhancements. Um, and so full product demonstrations are available by appointment. So if you'd like to see the software more in depth and if you want to uh, kind of dig into the features a little bit more, we do offer product demonstrations available by appointment. And if you're outside of the U.S., um, we can help you contact a reseller in your area that can help you with that as well. Um, and then another thing worth noting is we do offer free demos of RhinoCam and you can get that at mechsoft.com as well as rhinocam.com. And lastly, we get this question a lot, um, the webinar recording. It will be available. We, we do record every single webinar that we do, and you can view the recording at mechsoft.com forward slash blog. And it, it may be up as soon as um, this afternoon, Pacific Coast time. Uh, however, it'll definitely be up. Um, I put by tomorrow, not realizing that today's Friday, so early next week at the latest, um, but most likely you'll see it up there today. Um, so last but not least, just want to talk about the, um, the schedule for this morning. We have special guest Scott Davidson from McNeil & Associates, uh, which if you're unfamiliar with McNeil, they are the ones who develop RhinoCAD. So Scott will be giving us an overview of Rhinoceros 5. And um, then we're going to hear from Uday. Uday is our technical support manager here at MechSoft. He's going to be giving us an overview of the mill and turn modules and what's new in this 2014 version. Then Scott Dixon, from uh, he's our international sales ma manager here at MechSoft. He's going to be doing, showing us the nesting module. Um, and then uh, last but not least, we have Enrique Romero. He is our tech, uh, a technical support technician here at MechSoft. He's going to be showing us the art module and what's new in this 2014 version. And then we'll finish things off with a Q&A. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Scott Davidson, who is going to be showing us Rhino 5. So Scott, I am making you the presenter. So you can go ahead and show your screen. And Scott, I think you've muted yourself, so you might want to unmute you. Yeah. Hello, Tim. Yep. Hear so, you loud and clear. Yep. So uh, anyway, thank you for uh, the introduction. And I just want to say from McNeil that uh, we are uh, really excited that uh, RhinoCam 2014 has come out. And uh, the ability, uh, well, just as the product moves forward and, and between the two product, our two products, it's really uh, great to see that both have um, have really um, we continue to add features and functions to make it a, a more full and uh, rich solution for everybody. So what I want to show today is the 
really an overview quickly of um, Rhino uh, 5, uh, what Rhino 5 is used for, and maybe a couple of the new features that might be useful in, in a CAD CAM situation. Uh, so Rhino itself is a, uh, a freeform surface modeler. It does solids also, and it's used a lot for very highly accurate uh, freeform models that uh, the, to you know, in in use for uh, design, in in presentation, and also in fabrication, and and that's one of the reasons that uh, uh, the Rhino Cam plugin is is so so useful to to people that use Rhino. Uh, you can see here that we have some images of uh, you know in the marine industry, um, jewelry, and uh, the car uh, industry uses uses this a lot for for prototyping and design. Uh, movie making, uh, architecture, uh, uh, product design, different things like that. So um, the the big features for those that don't know Rhino, uh, it's it's very uh, it does a lot of uh, freeform modeling and surfacing. It's extremely accurate, so uh, accurate enough to manufacture from the models. Uh, the it's compatible with lots of different software. We'll go over that really quick today. It's very good at reading a lot of file formats and repairing those file formats in order to, for instance, break them back apart so that you can use them for fabrication. Uh, it's hopefully easy to learn, uh, at least that's what we've heard. Um, it's very fast and, for, and it is uh, affordable. So this is just an example of, of what somebody would use Rhino for or does use Rhino for. Uh, this is Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. Uh, you can see that they, they, this is an older design that they've had to reverse engineer from some old models. And so they use Rhino to uh, model a lot of the surfaces, which are quite complex. And then they actually use very large CNC machines to, to machine a lot of foam or to machine uh, molds, depending on how they're going to fabricate each piece. Uh, another example of using uh, Rhino to, to create, uh, in this case, an uh, indoor skate park. Uh, so you, you design the shape, and then you can use Rhino to break down those shapes, uh, flatten those, those shapes, and, 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 then, and then, you know, send them off to Rhino Cam or Rhino Nest and uh, start to work through the fabrication process from there. Furniture is another uh, place that, that we see Rhino used quite a bit, and uh, lots of freeform shapes, both traditional and very modern furniture. And so, uh, jewelry, just to kind of have the broad range of scales here. Uh, any, of those, any of you that do jewelry, rhinos uh, can help with uh, both designing and visualizing the, uh, visualizing the, the artwork or the, the, the product that you design. And then you can use RhinoCam to help with the fabrication process of those designs. So some of the areas that, that Rhino works well to reach out beyond uh, just uh, essentially designing right within Rhino or, or, or coming up with the design yourself, uh, one area that, that Rhino's used a lot is you can use scanners to scan existing data out in the real world and then bring that point set in and then use that to help reverse engineer or fabricate or, or match up to or mate to uh, that that information and so there's lots of different scanners that we can take information from uh, the nice part about RhinoCam which is uh, a very strong powerful uh, piece of its technology is it can actually take the meshes from the scans that exist in Rhino and can machine directly on those uh, there's no need to do uh, a lot of work to get it to a nerve surface or something like that and that that's something that can really help a lot if you have scan data that you're trying to use or trying to machine over. Um, as, as you know, with RhinoCam, you can, you can uh, drive a lot of different types of mills. Uh, you can drive uh, the, uh, a lot of, of the higher end laser cutters. Uh, also, in the, with the ability, we have the ability to drive uh, desktop lasers. We have the ability to go out to STL and rapid prototyping machines. And so combining Rhino and RhinoCam gives you the ability to drive many different fabrication processes. Uh, you know, many, many projects that you have probably use multiple 
fabrication processes. And with Rhino and RhinoCam, we can actually drive just a, a broad, broad range. And, and 2014 brings more of that with its ability to do turning. And, and, and so that's a, that's a really nice improvement. Just a quick overview of the uh, file formats we bring in. I think what's important to understand is that whether it's 2D graphical information or it's engineering information from some engineering products, uh, whether it's uh, uh, meshes from animation products, Rhino can take all of that data and bring it together all in one file. And then you can work on it and use it in order to, um, in, in order to uh, use that to, to fabricate with or, or introduce into your design. And this is one of the areas that Rhino is, is very, very strong. The ability to take even really poorly formatted files and get something useful out of them. Uh, some of the things that we've added in Rhino 5, for those you know that, that the, about uh, Rhino but, but want to know what's new in Rhino 5, is the ability, uh, one of the things we've improved the ability to uh, do solid editing. So we can take an existing solid model and for instance we can remove holes, we can change the whole depth, we can move holes around. But this is a good example in this image that you see here, the ability to remove um, the venting for instance before you were to do a, a, a cam process on it. You could remove that with Rhino, it would close the hole and remove the inner surfaces and, and then you could uh, go from there. Uh, another area that, that's very good is we have the ability to do curved booleans, which what that allows you to do is take many, many curves and actually uh, flood fill areas of those and create closed outlines uh, of, of, the, of very complex 2D shapes. A lot of people use that to create good regions to, to use for machining, or if you get a sign from a assign a graphic from Adobe Illustrator to, and you need to do inlays or you need to, to clean up those curves, you can use the curve boolean command to find the different outlines and clean them up in order to make them good for machining. Um, these are two really strong cleanup and editing tools in, uh, in Rhino 5. Uh, the other ability we have is the ability to uh, analyze and uh, th both thicken and analyze draft angle, for instance, on meshes. And so you, as you get scans or, or you have artwork, uh, you can actually start to analyze that and decide how that's going to work in your, in your fabrication process. Uh, and then the last thing that we have, or the, what's the newest thing in Rhino 5, probably that may be most effective for everybody, is Rhino 5's true 64-bit. And so it has the ability to address a much larger memory space. And so the, the models and, the, uh, and your, your CAM operations can actually be much, much larger and much more sophisticated. And, and you can still stay within the limits of the, of the memory that 64-bit can address, which is essentially unlimited. Uh, previously with Rhino 4, you could only address up to 4 gigabytes of space. And now with Windows 8, for instance, we can address 512 gigabytes of space in the memory pool. And uh, essentially, it's, it's that, that's a limitless uh, number at this point in time. It's, it, it, I can't imagine a model that would be that big. But. So it, we can handle much, much larger models than, than we could previously. Uh, we have the ability to now do more display styles. So as you're visualizing your models, as you're visualizing your designs, we can now do, for instance, patent drawings, and we can do uh, patent drawings, and we can do renderings. And these are all real time in the viewport. And finally, uh, if you need to document your uh, work or document your designs or doc or do some shop drawings, you can use Rhino to do 2D drafting with line weights, line types, fills, hatches, and that can be combined, of course, with RhinoCam, and that's a, a very powerful to complete the solution. Um, I have a lot more here, but I think I, I'm going to run out of time here. So um, I thank you for your time, and um, I'm going to let uh, Uday take over and show you what you came here for, which is the uh, RhinoCam 2014.
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the folks who have joined us from various parts of the globe. I would like to uh, first thank uh, Scott Davidson for giving us a wonderful overview of Rhinoceros 5. Uh, today we are here to uh, showcase RhinoCam 2014, our newest release of RhinoCam, which is fully integrated into Rhinoceros 5. So the best in CAD meets the best in CAM. So RhinoCam is a fully integrated uh, CAD CAM solution in Rhinoceros 5. So RhinoCam runs out of the uh, Visual Cam's uh, Cam engine. So it basically uses Visual Cam's core Cam functionalities and it's fully integrated into Rhino. So it allows you to work in native Rhino environment to meet your Cam machining needs. Now, as Tim pointed out earlier, RhinoCam 2014 now offers four different modules. We have the milling module, which is available in different configurations to suit your machining needs. We now have the turning module, which is also fully integrated into RhinoCam. And we do have a nesting and art module, which can be used for converting artwork to geometry, which could be suitable for machining or your 3D printing or other downstream applications. Now, we would like to go ahead and take a look at each of these modules. First, I'm going to give you an, a quick overview of the milling module, just to go over some of the new features and enhancements from the previous version of RhinoCam 2012. Now, to launch the milling module, you would just go up to RhinoCam from the menu bar and select Mill, and this automatically loads your machining operations browser, which now appears over on the left half of your screen, and it's docked in Rhinoceros, and you can toggle to also load the machining objects browser by just selecting tools machining objects from the machining operations browser. Now I would like to go over some of the new enhancements and features in RhinoCam 2014. You can also find a list of all of these features on Mexoft's website or you can go to rhinocam.com directly and click on see what's new in RhinoCam 2014. Now there's several new features and enhancements that have been added in the 2014 release and let's take a look at a few of these. Uh, one of the big improvements is multi-threading, so regeneration of toolpaths now allows usage of multiple cores in your machine when regenerating machining operations. We've also introduced new toolpath methods in two and a half axis machining or right from starting with high-speed pocketing You've also enhanced our pocketing methods. Now, these methods are available in all configurations of RhinoCam, starting from standard to expert, pro, and premium. So you can take advantage of these uh, new toolpath methods and enhancements in RhinoCam 2014. You can read through, look through the entire list of enhancements, which is available on our website. There have also been several enhancements in three-axis toolpath methods performance improvements, memory, better memory management with 4-axis and also enhancements with 5-axis methods. Now, without any further delay, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples in here to give you an overview of these new toolpath methods. And if you do have any questions, feel free to uh, drop a note in, the web in your webinar session and we'll try to get to them as quickly as possible. So I'm going to start with an example here to give you the new high-speed pocketing method that we have available in the 2014 version. Now here is a part um, which is modeled in Rhino. You can either work with native Rhino geometries or you can work with geometries that are imported into Rhino in different file formats that Rhino supports. Now to access the uh, pocketing methods, the high-speed pocketing, you would just go under the program tab, click on two axis, and you'll find the high-speed pocketing method just right after pocketing. So selecting high-speed pocketing now allows you to you know, specify your parameters. Now one of the new features that you can do in RhinoCam is in addition to selecting curves as your machining regions, you could actually select the face edges or the surface edges from a surface or a polysurface geometry as your drive region for machining process. 
Now specify your tool, your feed speeds, you can define your cutting parameters, and then selecting generate creates your toolpath. And there's your high speed pocketing toolpath. Now, what are the benefits or advantages of these toolpaths? Now, the high speed pocketing toolpath is made up of tangential arcs, and also it provides constant tool engagement, which allows you to run at higher feed rates, you know, which basically translates to prolonged tool life and also saves you cost in your machining process. You could now go ahead and run the verification in here. So we'd like to hit the simulate to run the simulation of the high speed pocketing toolpath. So I'm going to pause the simulation and quickly skip through the end so we can take a look at the result of the simulation. The next thing I would like to demonstrate is some of the enhancements we have in the pocketing toolpath methods in RhinoCam 2014. Now these toolpath methods, the high speed pocketing and the pocketing are available in all configurations of RhinoCam 2014, standard, expert, pro and premium. Now with the pocketing, we actually have new enhancements in the regular two axis pocketing methods. One of the new enhancements is clean corners. So when you select clean corners, it automatically detects all of the corners where the tool could not reach between each pass and then adds a tool pad based on the uncut areas with the high speed corner cleanup loops with tangential arcs. As you can see in the tool pad here, it creates those corner cleanup loops with tangential arcs. This is one of the new enhancements we've put in in the latest release of RhinoCam 2014. We've also added a new cut pattern method in the two axis pocketing routine which is called offset spiral pattern. The spiral pattern creates, you know, this creates successive spiral pattern offsets of the part shape which also allows you to you know, create you know, nice tool pads for machining your parts. Now, in addition to these, we've also added a new feature called the ability to keeping the tool down in pocketing operations. Now, this basically keeps the cutter in contact with the cut level plane while minimizing the, ramp, minimizing the ramping entries and plunges into the material from multiple locations. Now, here's an example where the tool pad shows ramping or entry and entry motions in multiple locations as you can see which results in multiple transfer motions. Now with the new release you have an option to select always keep tool down which basically minimizes these engage motions and as you can notice here it's minimizing to just a few engage motions and it keeps the cutter in contact with the cut level plane while minimizing these ramping entries and plunging into the material. Now these are some of the new features and enhancements in just the two and a half axis or two axis methods. We will now take a look at the multi-threading manager in the 2014 release. I'm going to take an example where we have some you know, tool pads generated like three axis tool pads. So I'm going to go ahead and load this part into RhinoCam. Now, on regenerating the toolpath, if the multi-threading manager option is not active, this will be regenerated in single threads. Selecting generate toolpaths in multiple threads now takes advantage of your uh, multiple cores on your computer and automatically uh, generates these in multiple threads. So it reduces your toolpath computation time by taking advantage of the multi-core processing. So these are some of the new enhancements that we are uh, demonstrating to you here on the webinar in RhinoCam 2014. If you do have any questions about the milling module, the new features and enhancements, feel free to drop us a note and ask a question and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Now here is a very nice toolpath which shows constant 3D step pocketing in RhinoCam 2014. Now this feature is available to you in the pro and premium configurations of RhinoCam, the 3D offset pocketing. Now, without further delay, I would also like you to go ahead and demonstrate the turning module in RhinoCam 2014. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, load in a part.
where we can take a look at how we can program parts in RhinoCam's the new turning module. Now to switch from the milling module over to turning, you just go up to the RhinoCam 2014 on the menu bar and you select the turn and you'll notice that the interface, the machining browser, automatically switches over to your turning module. So let's go ahead and load in a part and then let's try to program it here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this part in here. Now turning, is a, this is a two-axis CNC lathe programming module or turning module which can be used for programming your you know, parts for uh, your lathe. Now when the turning browser is loaded, RhinoCam automatically sets the turn coordinate system uh, for programming. Now the interface looks very similar to your machining uh, browser in milling where you have the program and the simulate tab on the machining operations browser and you have your tools tab where you can define different types of uh, inserts and drilling tools. Now there are basically two types of operations in turning. You have your turning operations which is roughing, finishing, groove roughing, groove finishing. You have follow curve which is similar to engraving and then you have your threading and parting off operations. And then you have the whole machining operation which include drilling, tapping and boring and reverse boring. Now these operations are performed actually along the z-axis. Now the typical workflow in a turning operation would be either you would create your part in Rhino or you can import a part model in, you know, model in a different system and bring it into Rhino. Now the first step is to establish or define the part geometry for turning. So you would go in the machining browser under the setup group, select part, and you can select uh, surfaces, solids or meshes uh, to define your part geometry or you could even select uh, just 2D curves to establish your part geometry in RhinoCam's turning module. Here we are basically selecting a bunch of surfaces here. So you click on select surfaces and basically just uh, do a window select to select the entire part and RhinoCam automatically establishes the part geometry for turning. You would then basically go through the process of defining your stock geometry. There's different types of stock geometry you can define right from cylinder stock you can define the radius and radius and the length, or you can do a you know part cylinder stock. You have offset stock, revolve stock. You can even do a stock by selection where the stock can be modeled in Rhino, and you can basically select it to define your stock. Once you define your stock, you would want to align your stock to the uh, part geometry. You can choose one of the Z alignment options in here, and then pick the material for your turning operations. So once you define the material and the stock, you can look at the stock and the material, apply the texture visibility, and in, under your simulate tab, you can view the stock, what you define. Now the stock can be represented in different ways. You can look at the stock as a full view, a three-quarter view, a half, or a quarter view. So selecting a three-quarter view would help you view simulations when you have ID features or inner diameters that you programmed on the part. Now let's try to program this part here in turning. The first step is once you establish your part, your alignment, your material, you would want to go ahead and define your work zero or the program zero for programming this part. So you can do this by going to the work zero operation and you notice that the turn coordinate system, your X and the Z axis are automatically defined in RhinoCam's turning module. So you would choose either set to stock box or part box or you can even pick a point to establish the origin for, for your machining. So typically in a turning application you would want to set the origin to the face of the stock. So once you've done that you can go ahead and create your tool paths. We can start with roughing and finishing. Now these operations, roughing and finishing can be uh, program for OD, which is outer diameter, inner diameter, or facing. Now depending on the tool or the insert type that you define, RhinoCam's turning module will automatically set the approach type for OD, if it's an OD outer diameter orientation or an ID operation. So once you define your insert types or tool, you would go ahead and select the tool and go over to your cutting parameters and you'll notice that the approach type is automatically set to OD for outer diameter operations. You could then specify any containment areas if you want to limit tool paths, specify your parameters, your entry and exits, your clearance parameters, 
and selecting generate creates your toolpath. Now the workflow is very similar to how you've been used to programming in RhinoCam's milling module. So it's all in one interface, you know, easy to work, the workflow is a lot simpler and you can run the verification of cuts right inside of Rhino. Now here is your OD roughing operation. We're now going to basically follow it up with a finishing operation to finish off the OD. As I mentioned earlier, the drilling operations are performed axially along the axis of rotation. We have a drilling operation program and all of the roughing operations that you program in RhinoCam take into account the in-process stock which means that it knows the stock being left from the previous step. So when I program the roughing operation for the ID feature, it automatically knows that the there is a you know, bore or drilled hole on the part so it's not going to end up cutting air to you know, remove those materials that have already been machined up. So there is your ID roughing toolpath that you're looking at. And we have ID finishing, turn finishing toolpath. So once you have all of these operations programmed, you could go ahead and take a look at the estimated machining time by selecting information, the total machining time, and then right click and post allows you to post process the file to your machine controller. So there's a you know, list of posts that are included. You can also create new posts and customize the post to tailor it to your machining needs. So I'm going to go ahead and post it out to a fan uh, controller here and there's your post-it code. You can either output in diameter mode or you can output in radius mode depending on what your controller expects. Now one of the nice features that turning module offers is ability to save and archive these operations into a knowledge base. Now by doing this, if you are programming parts that are similar to these, you can basically retain the entire workflow of operations. It includes all the tools, the parameters, what you defined, and you can load them on other parts that you're working with. Now I'm going to go ahead and take an example of a typical woodworking part you may want to use uh, the turning module for. So I'm going to go grab this part here that was modeled in Rhino with using a combination of arcs, nerves, curves, and we would like to go ahead and program this part in here. So as the part is being loaded, what I'm going to be doing here is basically going to go ahead and try to load a knowledge base. So basically this would allow us to uh, create machining operations for it. So once the part geometry is loaded in RhinoCam, we would now go ahead and basically define our machining process. So in order to define the machining process, we would first need to go ahead and specify the part definition. Okay, there we go. We got the part loaded. So I'm going to go up to RhinoCam and selecting the turning browser. The part is now loaded. So I'm going to go ahead and define my part by selecting the part. So define part geometry. I can either select surfaces or I could select curves. Now since I would like to take advantage of the knowledge base I saved from the previous operation, I'm going to go up to load knowledge base and pick the knowledge base I had just defined in here. So I'm going to click open. And now this automatically loads the machining operations. We have a turn roughing, a turn finishing operation, and also it brings in the information and the tool I had defined for it. Now once I have the knowledge base loaded, I could just do a right click and regenerate, and this automatically computes the toolpath for your roughing, turn roughing, and finishing operations. Now if you'd like to make any changes or edits to it, just double click on the operation and you can make edits to your parameters. If you need to specify a containment, you can make these edits. You can go to your roughing parameters. You can modify your entry and exit and generate. So the knowledge base allows you to archive all of these operations and then you know, just load it in on a different part and establish the toolpath and generate it. Now here's your turn roughing operation and we have the turn finishing operation. Now this basically gives you an overview of the turning module in RhinoCam. Now the turning module is available in 
you know, 64-bit and 32-bit. So RhinoCam 2014 it runs in Rhinoceros 5 and is available in both 32 and 64-bit versions of uh, Rhino. Now, I would like to invite my colleague Scott Dixon to give us an introduction, an overview of the <coughs> nesting module in RhinoCam. So without any further delays, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand this over to Scott. Good day. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. You've done a great job on uh, demonstrating the, the milling and the turning. Uh, Uday and I are going to take you through some of the features in nesting in the next five minutes, and uh, which is available under RhinoCamp 2014. Uh, he's retrieved a part that I prepared on the screen. I just want to point out that there are two large shapes, which are the material shapes that will be nested into, and then ten parts staged on the left of those that we will nest uh, into those materials. To get to nesting, as Uday has explained, you go to the menu bar, Rhino Cam, and there is uh, nesting right there as an option. The moment you select that, uh, the wizard-like browser comes up on the left, as is typical, and uh, we'll walk down through these steps and show you how to accomplish a nest. Now, the very first step is a choice of whether you want to use true shape nesting or rectangular nesting. We're actually going to demonstrate the true shape nesting. Uh, it's got a lot more capabilities and options, but I want to briefly just say what rectangular nesting is. Uh, for those industries where the parts and the material shape are basically rectangular, then the rectangular nesting can be used. For instance, uh, the furniture uh, assembly panel, maybe cabinetry, the parts are basically rectangular. Uh, rectangular nesting is very fast, uh, but we're going to demonstrate for you this the, the, today uh, the true shape nesting. So we'll choose that. Go to the next step then, if you would, Uday. And the first thing we want to do is to select the geometry that represents the uh, the stock material that we're going to build a nest on. And as you noticed, I've got an irregular shape and a rectangular shape. The irregular representing uh, maybe a remnant from from a previous job. So you select the curves, and I'm going to have you pick the top shape, large shape first, then the bottom one in that order. And right mouse button three accepts those two, and you'll see them entered into the the list on the left. We're going to have one rectangular shape. So on sheet two. Uh, the second sheet, let's put in five. Let's say we've got five stock shapes that we can uh, have our nest cascade over to. And while you're there, Uday, why don't you set the nesting direction uh, of that second shape to be along Y. And I'll show you why later. And then let's set a grain direction, just for fun, um, for both of those to be along X. And notice when he sets one of them and then tries to set the second one, the system gives him a message that both have to be set if you're going to use grain direction. So it will say an OK to that will automatically set the second one. All right, now let's go down and select the parts that we want to nest. And I'm going to have Uday select these parts in a specific way because I found it's a real advantage. Start at the bottom select the large part and select its periphery only. In fact, select all ten parts from the bottom to the top, but only the periphery. The reason I do that is because that puts them at the very top of the list. A right mouse button three will accept those periphery shapes, and you will see them entered into uh, the parts list as he uses the right mouse button three to accept it. And then I want them to window select all the other internal shapes, which is very fast. And, um, and that my right mouse button three then accepts those and adds those to the list. The reason I do that is because now I've got access to the shapes, which is where I want to put in quantity right at the top of the list, and it makes it very easy. So let's go down through these. I need 20 of the large part, number one. 15 of the second one, 10 of the third one, 166 of part four, 
110 of part 5, 10 uh, of the next one, part 6, yeah. and on part 7, um, I need 30 of those. And then 24 of the next, 20 of uh, that next one, part 9, 20 of those. And the last part, I need 60 of that small part. All right, now um, let's go back up to part number 1. And this will be our example of grain direction real quickly. Would you go across, set the grain direction to along Y. And just to show you that we do have control of grain direction here. Down below are a few parameters. The orientation step angle allows the rotation of any of those parts, actually all of those parts if necessary. And we're going to leave that to be a 90 degree increment. Uh, you can change that down to whatever you want, but this allows the parts to be rotated by 90 degrees and still fit. Now that does not affect those that have grain direction. Grain direction may be rotated 180, but it still has to line up with the grain. And I'm going to have Uday check the two boxes to mirror parts if necessary, and also place large, smaller parts within the windows and cutouts of any larger parts. And then let's go to the next step, uh, Uday. Once you've got all that parameter uh, data set up, these two parameters allow a distance or a spacing. I'm going to have him set the part to part spacing to be. 0.25, a quarter of an inch, and the outer parts to the edge of the sheet to be three quarters of an inch, just to keep it internal a little bit. There's an accuracy. We're going to leave it at high accuracy, and then let's just execute the nest, and we will take a look at the results as soon as it's through. Now, you hit the preview nest, you will get a list on the left of how many sheets were used and what their utilization is. And you'll notice that we said one sheet on the, on the remnant. There is the nest that is produced. Go to the second one. It moves down to the full sheets. Shows the uh, increment there. And you'll notice, too, if you look closely, um, maybe back. There you go. Um, on that last sheet where you are right now, notice that we have specified that the nesting should start uh, on the left side, so that will kind of give you uh, a better control of remnants. But if you go back up to sheet 2-1 briefly, look inside some of the windows of that larger part and you see you actually have nest, you have small parts within windows of within parts to a three level and it's, uh, it's pretty efficient there. Okay, so without further ado, let's conclude this. Let's say we are satisfied with a nest. We're going to commit the nest as your last stage. And once you do that, this nested geometry for each of the sheets is written onto one of your CAD layers, giving you access to go back in and do machining or select this geometry for machining or whatever other application you wish to do uh, with this uh, nested geometry. Before you commit, by the way, you can always return back up and change parameters to get a better nest. It's an iterative process and it's a very workable process. And in a nutshell, there you have it for nesting that's available on RhinoCam 2014. And with that, I will turn the time, I believe, back to Tim. Yes. To the next presenter. Thank Alrighty. Thank you very much, Scott, for that awesome overview of nesting. And um, a, a quick thing, we're, we're going to be turning it over to Enrique in just a second to go over our art module within RhinoCam 2014. But before we do so, I did want to mention one thing that I forgot to mention in the introduction, and that's the questions panel. So if you have any questions regarding RhinoCam, any of the modules, as well as RhinoCAD, feel free to ask those questions in the, the questions panel, which can be found on the, the right-hand uh, side of your GoToWebinar panel. And we'll do our best to answer those questions as best we can throughout the webinar, as well as during the, the Q&A period that will be following our art module presentation. Uh, so we, we won't have time to answer every single question in that q and I just want to keep that in mind. But your question will be answered. If we don't have time to answer it, then we will uh, 
contact you directly um, and, and give you an answer to your question. So your question will get answered. So uh, everyone has done a great job of, of the questions throughout, but just remember that uh, any additional questions come up, feel free to, to put them in there. And uh, yeah, Enrique is just finishing getting set up now, so it's just going to be a, another second. All right. So uh, Enrique is one of our technical support technicians, and he is going to give us a presentation on the art module within RhinoCamp 2014. All right, Enrique, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tim. Hello, everyone, and thanks again for joining us. Uh, one of the main benefits of RhinoCamp art is to be able to convert artwork into geometry that's suitable for machining or any other downstream applications such as 3D printing. Uh, <clears throat> let's begin by opening the art module. So we'll just go to RhinoCam and then select the art module. Okay. I would like to demonstrate uh, how RhinoCam art works and also some of the new features. First, let's start by creating a, a project workspace here within the art browser. So I'm just going to click on the create project icon. And the extents that I want to use are actually already set. I want to use a length of 5 and a width of 5 and a resolution of 100 a DPI or dots per inches. I'm just going to cl click generate here and you'll see that it quickly creates a uh, project workspace which is sort of a, a canvas for our artwork. Okay. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to do is I want to cl uh, click on the create 3D relief icon. I want to select the JPEG image. In this example I'm just going to select the, the dragon. I'm going to click open. I'm just going to, for my boolean operation, I'm going to select add and those are the only parameters I want to use for now, so I'm just going to click Generate. And you'll see that it almost instantly places my uh, 3D relief onto the project workspace that I just previously created. Okay. One, uh, one of the new features within the ART 2014 is texture mapping. So let me just show you that really quick. I'm just going to double click on Project. You can see here where you can pick material, various different materials to pick from. I already have it defaulted to brass, so I'll just hit cancel out of there. I'll click cancel out of there. And then <clears throat> here is my material texture visibility. I just select it, and you'll see that it's uh, now uh, the texture mapping is in brass. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to just quickly show you uh, the, uh, the milling of this mesh. So to do so, I'm just going to click on the export as meshes to CAD. This will just take a couple of seconds here. Okay. And then I want to actually go, since I exported it to my CAD system and I want to mill it, I'm going to go into mill. And move this down really quick. I want to go right into my uh, three axis and select parallel finishing just for this example. I'm just going to click generate here. It'll just take a couple of seconds, but you'll see that pretty much almost immediately we have a, a tool path for the 3D relief that I just created a couple of seconds ago. Okay, so that's just a quick uh, example of creating the 3D relief in the art module and the milling of that mesh. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I actually want to go back into the art module and show you a couple of other uh, new features. Uh, one of those new features uh, is the shape, uh, shape library. Um, what you can do is, as you create different uh, shapes is you can actually right click on the project or the projects folder and you could uh, save those shapes uh, to a library. Once those shapes are saved you can just quickly go into your load shape library and what that does is from your shape library it just brings up the list of your uh, shapes that you've previously uh, have saved. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the Rhino shape and I'm going to click open and it's just really easy to use. You just left click, drag and drop. You select the Boolean type. I'm going to use add for this example. I'll click OK and then let me click the project. I'm going to use the top here. I'll just move this over so we can take a better look at it and you can see how quick you can just import uh, previously shaped, uh, saved shapes. Another uh, new feature that I want to show you is actually the convert native geometry. Uh, with, that, with that function, um, what that does is it actually converts the CAD geometry suitable for 3D reliefs. 
Uh, this can be CAD geometry that was designed in Rhino or imported into, into Rhino. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm just going to take a second here to create some CAD and then actually select that icon. Really simple to use, just select surface. We'll select the surface I just created, right click, click generate, click on the project again, and there it is. Um, a couple of other new features that we're just going to quickly uh, go over are the, uh, you can align the native uh, CAD geometry within the project workspace. Uh, another new feature is the uh, move to origin, which moves your CAD geometry anywhere with, within the uh, project workspace. And uh, one of the other features I want to just quickly show you is the suppress, suppressing of uh, different reliefs. So I'm just going to uncheck the 3D relief operation, click on the project workspace, and while we're actually seeing there's still the, the mesh from when I exported it, but now that I just uh, refreshed there and, de and deleted that uh, exported mesh, you'll see um, basically that the relief operation that I unchecked has, has been suppressed. So these are just some of the new features in RhinoCam Art 2014. Uh, and again, the art module is fully integrated inside of RhinoCam 2014. And uh, without further ado, uh, I would actually like to hand it back over to Tim uh, for the wrap-up. Alrighty. Thank you, Enrique, for that overview of the art module. And uh, yeah, as Enrique said, we're going to wrap up. But before, we're going to do uh, some question and answers. Um, we are running out of time, so we're going to keep this brief. However, like I mentioned previously, uh, your question will get answered. Um, so we'll, we'll respond to you directly if we don't have time to address it this morning. Uh, we, the, starting out, we have some, some more general sales questions, and so I'm going to ask uh, Anita Anand, who is the VP of Sales and Operations here at Mexsoft Corporation. Um, I've asked her to answer some of these questions for me. So um, first and foremost, uh, first question is, what does RhinoCam 2014 include? We got that question several times, and it's a good broad question to start off with. So Anita, do you want to answer that for us? Uh, sure thing, Tim. Uh, now, RhinoCam includes four modules, the mill, the turn, the nest, as well as the art module. Each of those modules can be purchased and licensed separately. So for example, if you were a RhinoCam 2012 customer and you're upgrading to RhinoCam 2014, uh, you will be upgraded to the mill module of RhinoCam 2014. If you did at some point uh, purchase the Nest module, that uh, uh, there will be an upgrade on that as well. But each of those modules will be uh, purchased and licensed separately. Uh, also, a little note there to mention, RhinoCam 2014 uh, runs inside Rhino 5.0, uh, not inside Rhino 4. The previous version did run in Rhino 4 and 5, but RhinoCam 2014 is exclusively for Rhino 5.0 both 32 and 64-bit versions. Great. Thank you, Anita. I answered a couple of other questions I had on here as well. So let's see. Um, what are the, the top five new features in RhinoCam? This is a good broad level overview question. So um, Anita, if you wouldn't mind answering that question for us as well, that'd be Okay. Uh, well, as uh, I, I believe uh, Uday and Enrique uh, did mention the big uh, uh, five uh, top improvements, we did make a lot of two access high speed machining methods. They are brand new. Uh, we uh, included those in the RhinoCam 2014. The multi threading operations that uh, uh, are available through all the tool paths, speed and memory improvements, especially in the 3D offset machining methods. Um, we added a brand new turn module now, which is integrated in uh, Rhino, a big advantage for our Rhino customers. Uh, there were major improvements in the art module, especially in, term of, uh, in terms of the memory management and the new operations and uh, within the shape library as well. Uh, these were the big enhancements. Apart from these, there are several uh, minor enhancements, and you can uh, see a really detailed list of those in our What's New document that Uday pointed out earlier in the webinar, also available on our website. 
Great, thank you, Anita. Uh, one thing I, before we get to more questions, I do want to mention if you are uh, reaching us from uh, internationally, uh, we, we definitely encourage you to contact your, your local reseller. Uh, Mexsoft uh, Europe as well as Mexsoft Oceania are, are, are big distributors in other parts of the world. So definitely contact them uh, in terms of local translations from your local reseller as well as if you'd like to see a demo of Rhino Cam 2014. Uh, so, uh, here in, in Irvine, California, we, we just uh, do uh, handle the, the sales and support for our domestic customers. Uh, so definitely contact your local resellers for more information as well as uh, product demonstrations. So the, the next question I, I'd like to answer, the, and I have a couple um, easy general questions I'll just answer myself here. And, and one person asks if, if the slides will be available. Um, with the recording, and, and yes, um, I'm going to get the, the slides from Scott Davidson as well as um, there's just a couple slides from us, and so we'll, we'll pair that with the, the recording that will be available uh, either later today or early next week at the latest. Um, it does take some, some time to compile the recording and, and put the, the blog post together, but hopefully this afternoon we'll have that available and we'll, we'll send everybody an email um, announcing that that's available on our blog. Uh, and so you'll be able to watch that recording. Um, if, if you missed anything today, if you had to step out, and, and, or just to, to watch it again, we know we, we jam-pack a lot of, uh, a lot of um, information into this webinar, and so sometimes you've got to go back and, and watch a couple more things. So um, that's all the questions we really have time for today. Uh, we, we did answer a lot of questions throughout the webinar, so we hope we answered your questions. Otherwise, like I've said several times, we will contact you directly with, with an answer to your question. Um, but we do want to get you guys out on time uh, and just keep this webinar at, at an hour exactly. So uh, for the wrap-up, um, a couple quick reminders. You can download the free demo of RhinoCam 2014 at mechsoft.com as well as rhinocam.com. So uh, feel free to do so uh, if, if you'd like to see the product more in depth. And, and like I mentioned just now, the webinar recording will be available on the blog. Um, for purchasing or upgrading, give us a call if you are uh, domestically in, in North America, U.S. and Canada. Give us a call. Our phone number is there. Or, of course, visit our website or email us. And then, like I mentioned, uh, contact your, your local reseller. And um, a, a last-minute note for our North America customers, we are extending our pre-release sale for North America. So it's no longer just a pre-release sale, but it's now a release sale, and we'll extend that through the end of November. So uh, give us a call for more information, and we'll, we'll definitely get you that savings. And uh, I, th I think we have one more slide. There we go. Um, yeah, follow us on, on social media. We, we tend to post our, uh, our webinars our, when, after we schedule webinars, we tend to post them on our, our Facebook and Twitter first, so you can be the first to register for those webinars. Of course, our YouTube channel has all of these webinar recordings as well as product tutorials. We have um, tutorials on um, all of our products, not just RhinoCan. So you can um, go over there and, and watch MechSoft product tutorials to your heart's content. So um, we're going to go ahead and end the webinar now. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us this morning or afternoon, evening, wherever you are joining us from. Uh, and uh, we, we thank you for your business if you are a customer, and we, we look forward to future webinars. All right, thank you. The organizer has ended the session. And